that's free of charge. Man, thank you, group. Awesome job, choir, praise team, everybody involved. Great job. Give them a hand again. <laughs> Carrie, can you bring me that? Hey, Amen. What a, what a great job they did. What a great time of praise and worship we've just experienced. Amen. Today we're looking at the second Sunday of Advent, which is, of course, peace. As they just read about it just a few moments ago, lit the candle of peace. And today what I want us to look at is the idea of divine peace. What we get as God's children with divine peace. We're going to be looking at the book of John chapter 14 verse 27. Now Bill already read that to us. So I just, I'm going to ask you and you at home to go ahead and turn to John 14 27. We're going to just look at that again very quickly. Uh, but what we want to look at today is some key components about this. Because my friends, I, I want you to understand that everything that we receive that, that we need is divine. As I shared with you, the, every title of this, this series is going to be divine as it was last week, it was divine uh, intervention, and this week it's divine peace. And the reason that I want it to be the idea of divine is the fact of this, is that divine means it's effective and lasting, and it's fr- of God. So if we're looking for an intervention, where we talked about last week that God saw us in our need, and he intervened with us to us by sending Jesus to die on the cross for us, that was divine intervention. We, we get interventions all the time. But my friends, when they are divine, when they are from God, they are lasting. And when they're from God, then we know that they're effective. But also today with the idea of divine peace, and it's a peace that lasts forever. Could you have imagined last year at this time, everything that we've gone through in the year 2020? Could you have imagined it? As a matter of fact, I, I think... I probably even stood up here several times, talked about, and we heard people making comments about, oh, year 2020, going to be perfect vision. We're going to have it all good. Everybody's going to see clearly. I don't think any of us at this time last year had any idea what was going to take place in the year 2020. Amen? As a matter of fact, who would have thought that in the year 2020, we were going to have a pandemic? Most of us didn't even know the difference between anything with a pandemic. We didn't know what that was. Who knew that we would have an economic shutdown? Who knew that there'd be jobs lost and that we would see drug and alcohol abuse and suicide attempts skyrocket this year? More than any other year in history. How did we know or did, were we ever going to think that we would have this much confusion from people or this much division in our nation? Even inside churches, did we ever dream that there'd be this much division? Did we ever think that there would be churches shutting down? Did we ever think that limiting, there would be limiting of family at holiday gatherings, that families wouldn't be getting together because of the things going on? How many of us ever dreamed that there would be two different times of runs on toilet paper? Huh? Huh? As a matter of fact, if you had told me this time last year, Pastor, you better go stuck up on toilet paper because next year it's going to be hard to find. I'd have laughed at you. As a matter of fact, I still laugh about it because I'm thinking, toilet paper. Stocking it up. Hmm. One thing that I did tell my staff, you know, whenever the, the first time around when everybody's buying up all the food, one thing that I noticed that I, I told them at the at staff meeting, I said, you know what we could do? If you go to the grocery store, you go to Walmart, wherever it is you go, one thing that you're going to be able to find, you're always going to find fruits and vegetables. Have you ever noticed that never went out? People weren't stocking up. People weren't just flooding, getting fruits and vegetables. But who would have thought? Because none of us, I don't care who you are, none of us saw this coming. And so we see that lives are now so unsettled. And my friends, people are searching for answers. Unfortunately, many are searching for the answers of what to do now. They're searching for them in wrong places. Today, I want to encourage you with this message, the idea of divine peace, that we can have peace through this time, regardless of what's going on in our society, regardless of what's going on in our lives, regardless of what's going on around us, we can have a divine peace. Because lives, again, are unsettled. 
As a matter of fact, the book of James chapter 1 verse 2 says this, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So we need to understand that even through these difficult times, God has control of it. And God wants us to not be shaken from this. Because these are times that I believe that Satan wants us to doubt the very existence of God. And especially doubt his promises. God wants us in the church. God wants us as Christians. God wants you here. God wants you at home to be doubting God. And doubting what he said. And doubting all the promises that he gave us in scripture. That's what Satan is wanting to do through this time, but God has other plans. So these times are designed for that, but Jesus had alternatives. And Jesus, as what Bill just read a few moments ago, said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, as do I give it to you. He says, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So as we now have this unsettledness, as we have this idea of what are we going to do, and we have people searching for answers, my friends, today can I tell you, we have the answer. And his name is Jesus. And so as we look in this text, there's a couple of things that I want us to understand. That Jesus told us to not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. I want us to drop down at the bottom of that verse. We're going to start at the bottom again and work back up to the top. But we see here, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled nor be afraid. If we go back even to verse 1 of the same chapter, Jesus tells us again, he says, let not your heart be troubled. So in this text, in in this verse and chapter, we see two different times that Jesus looks at us and says, hey folks, I don't want you to be troubled over this. I don't want you to be troubled about what's coming. I don't want you to be troubled about what's in the past. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Can I tell you the first thing I want us to understand about this one? Is my friends, God was not surprised by 2020. Amen? God was not shocked by this. He didn't, like us, going, oh my What just happened? What's going on? I wasn't ready for this. God was not surprised by the year 2020. And that's why he tells us, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. I knew this was coming. As a matter of fact, we see that he knew this, and he even warned us. We look back in verse 25, and he says, These things have I spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all these things and bring to you remembrance of all these things. In verse 29, And now I have told you before it comes that when it does come, you may believe. He said there's going to be troubled times. There's going to be struggles in your life. And God's not going to be surprised about it. He knew it and he warned us. As a matter of fact, in John 16, 33, he says, These things have I spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. So there's again, there's that thought. Look, folks, things are not going to always be easy for us. In this world, you will have tribulations. But then what he says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So what he's telling us is he said, look, I know what's here. I know what's out there. And can I tell you this? He tells us each one, you don't have to be afraid of this. And you don't have to be afraid of what's out there. You don't have to live in this fear. Now, you have to use your head. He said, but I will guide you through these things. But this is, these are not hopeless times, my friends. We can still have peace through this. So he tells us, not God, first of all, that he wasn't surprised. But secondly, God will be with us. Amen? God's with us, my friends. He's not leaving us alone in this time. We can have confidence. So no matter what's coming our way, because we have a God who knew what was going to take place, he's already got it set up out there for us, and he says, I know what's going on, you don't have to be afraid, because I am now here with you. And because I am here with you, I have overcome all of these things, now I will get you through these things as well. No matter how bad it looks, no matter how bad it may seem, God says, I will get you through these times. Hebrews 13 Verses 5 and 6 tells us this. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, listen, because he is that, we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. 
Now, folks, listen to me. We can say with confidence, with boldness, my God, who is the creator of all life, who is sustainer of all things, who holds the future in his hands, he is with me, he is my helper, and then listen what else it says, I will not fear. I don't have to fear. As a matter of fact, he even asked the question at the end of, of Hebrews 13, 5, verse 6, he says, what can man do to me? Now, not just what man, but what can situations do to me? I have a helper in God, through the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, who is controlling all of this. I can now have confidence that he's helping me. So with God helping me, with God helping you here, with God helping you at home, getting us through these difficult times, what can these times do to us? What can they do? Nothing. Man can't do anything to us. The times can't do anything to us. So whatever is going on in our lives, please understand, God is with us, God understands it, and God wants us to be confident right now. He wants us to hold our heads up. He wants us to, to, to march forward. He wants us to continue to live. Because I'm not going to fear. So he tells us there in that text, not be troubled, nor be afraid. And then let's go back up to the top then. He says, peace I live with you, my peace. So my friends, what I want us to look at today here in this text is it's not our peace, it's not the world's peace. It's his peace. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 9, calls him the, the prince of peace. He's the author of peace. He's the creator of peace. He's the giver of peace. He's the prince of it. So he says, my peace I give you. And this peace begins with God. It doesn't begin when we do things right. It doesn't begin anytime. It begins when I have peace with God. That's what we're looking at. It begins with God. He says, that's why it's my peace. Because it basically starts out when we have peace with God. That's what we're going to be looking for. The Bible tells us in Romans, in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we have peace with God. That's what it begins with. That's how it starts. That we don't have peace with the world. We can't have peace with each other. We can't have peace anywhere unless we start with having peace with God. That's where it starts. Because it's that peace that we understand. That peace is true. That's true peace. Because when we have peace with God, we have true peace, which means it's solid and substantial. We don't have to worry about how that peace is going to last. We don't have to worry, is that peace going to crumble underneath us? Is that peace going to fade away? Is that peace going to, to just disappear? No, we now understand beyond a shadow of a doubt that the peace that he gives us, his peace is absolutely true because it's solid and it's substantial. We can put our lives on anything else in this world, but you know what happens to everything else in this world? It disappears. It gets old. It decrepits. It becomes decrepit. It, it falls apart. That's why he says, do not store for yourselves treasures on this earth. Because on this earth, anything on this earth is going to rust. It's going to be corrupted. It's going to, to die. So whatever we're putting our faith in here, whatever we're finding peace in this world, it's not going to last. It can't last forever. It's going to fall apart. Listen, if you even, if you even put your peace in this church, it's not going to work. Because this church isn't going to last. Amen? Can I tell you one day, hey, my friends, can I tell you one day this church is going to be raptured away? So your peace better not be settled in this church. Because one day this church, praise God, hallelujah, we're not going to be here. Amen? So your peace better not be found in this church. Your peace better be found in, in God through Jesus Christ. So that peace will last. It's true peace. It's not this imitation stuff that the world wants to give us. But it's true. Not only that, it's, it's fixed and sure. What that means is... He says, my peace is fixed and sure. In other words, it doesn't change according to circumstances in life. 
Folks, there's some times in life we're going along pretty well, amen? But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 2020 appears. Everybody seemed to be going well in 2019. Things seemed to be on the uptick, and things were moving along just fine. Then all of a sudden, we turn the corner, 2020 comes, and in March, the world changes. Jesus said, the peace I'm giving you doesn't change because of the circumstances you're in. We can be going along in life just well, even as individuals. And then one phone call, one phone call can literally change our lives. One doctor's visit, one diagnosis can literally change our lives forever. But Jesus said, my peace, my peace I give you doesn't change no matter what you get no matter what comes your way that peace is there and it's not going to be changed by outward because it's not an outward peace it's an inward peace and then not, not only that we also know then that that peace his peace meets all of our soul's needs everything can i tell you folks everything you're longing for everything the world is out there chasing trying to grasp hold of can I tell you this? His peace meets every bit of our soul's needs. We don't have a need past Jesus that he doesn't satisfy. Everything is fulfilled in him. So we need to understand this idea that it meets all of our needs and we're no longer at odds with God. No longer at odds with God. But I want to stop here for just a second very quickly. And bring this idea out. Is that when, when we think about this being at odds with God, I want you to understand, my friends, this is just a one-way battle. I think sometimes we have a picture, and the world has a picture, and I think sometimes we even in the church get a picture of God being at odds with us and us at odds with God, and here we're all enemies and we're fighting and we're, we're getting after each other. Can I tell you that that's not how this works? Can I tell you this? God is not an enemy to the world. The world's an enemy to God. How do I know that? Because God loves the world. How do I know that? Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world, even when they were enemies of him, even when they didn't want him, even when they had no desire of him, even when they were cursing his name, even when they were rejecting him, even when they were mocking him on the cross, even today when people doubt that there's even a God, even today when people look at this idea of Jesus and this idea of Christmas, say, we don't want any part of that. Still, God is not the enemy. God is loving the world. He said, I love you so much that I sent my son to die on the cross for you, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. I shared a few weeks ago with you that God takes no joy, not one ounce of joy in anybody perishing without him. So this idea of God being our enemy and God is angry with us and God is just waiting to zap us and God is just waiting for us to be destroyed so he can laugh and cheer and say I'm victorious over them folks that's not how it works God's heart breaks over this world he loves this world so if there's a battle going on that we're no longer at odds with God it's a one way battle the world hates God but can I tell you, God doesn't hate the world. God doesn't hate the world. He loves the world. The world wants God to be done away with. But can I tell you this, God doesn't want the world to be done away with. He wants to save the world. As a matter of fact, the idea of this, uh, this war with God, William Newell wrote this. He said, our peace with God is not as between two nations before a war. It says it's not like God is at war with us and we're at war with God. And so what we do is we now come together and we negotiate out a, 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 a truce and a treaty. And once we get all that worked out, then we can join together. It's not that way. It's not like two enemies. It's like a king, he says. It's between a king and a rebellious and guilty subjects. 
God is king and he loves us. God wants to have the best for us. God wants things to be good for us. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for me. And so that's his love. And now I'm the one that's rebellious. You're the one that's rebellious. Our world's the one that's rebellious. We're the one that hates God. We're the one that wants to get away from God. We want to to have him disappear. My friends, it's not that way. God loves us and he just wants us to be reconciled to him. And he loved us so much that he made, the possible, he made possible the reconciliation. I don't have to do anything. He made it possible. All I have to do is receive it. So it's his peace. That's what he says here. Peace, I live with you. My peace. I leave my peace. I don't want the world's peace. I don't want you to have to do anything. I don't want you to have to to, to strive for this. I don't, I don't want you to do anything. He says, it's, it's my peace. But here's the important part of, the third, the, of this third part here. It's the peace he gives. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Now here's the cool thing. It's a pure gift. Do you know what a gift is? It's a gift. It's something that you receive that you didn't earn. It's something that you didn't work for. As a matter of fact, we're we're aiming at Christmas. It's coming up in a few weeks. Many of you may have already had all your Christmas gifts bought. Amen? You overachievers. Some of you may be getting ready to start. Some people ask me, say, well, Pastor, have you gotten all your gifts bought? And I look at them and go, well, I don't know. Is it December 24th already? But this is the idea of gift. We're going to be giving gifts. We're going to be giving things to people that we just want to say, here, it's a gift to you. My friends, listen to me. A gift is given to us. It's not something that we, that we have to earn. If, it, if we earn it, it's not a gift. Amen? It's, it's a wage. So he says, I give it to you. In other words, my friends, we can't purchase it. We can't purchase this piece. We can't give enough money. We can't spend enough. We we can't donate enough. We can't do enough to earn this peace, to purchase it with our money, with our efforts. We can't do it. Although a lot of people say, man, if I just give enough money to charity, it's going to be all right. I will have that peace. And I feel good inside because I've, I've given large sums of money. But then it's not long until that peace begins to wane. So we can't purchase it. We can't give enough. But also we can't work for it. He says, it's my peace I give you. I I give it over to you. Again, if I work for it, it's a wage. It's, It's not a gift any longer. I can't give enough time. I can't donate enough time and effort. I can't work hard enough. I can't work long enough to get this kind of peace. Now, here's the cool thing about it, as I shared in the first service. You can't work to get the peace of Jesus. But here's the cool thing about it. When you get the peace of Jesus, you know what you're going to want to do? You're going to want to work. You're not working for it. You're working because of it. And there's a big difference. That's what God wants from us. He doesn't want us to work to earn the peace, but he wants us to have peace. And as a result of the peace we have through him, it's his peace, it's his gift that he gives us, then we will take that and then we will begin to work. And that's the difference of this idea of achieving things. We don't achieve any of this. That's why he made absolutely sure. He says, I do not want you to be afraid. Even in the year 2020, I want you to have peace. But I want you to have my peace that I give, not that you can earn any of this, because you just can't do it. Man, I've heard a lot of people say, we can't wait. Man, we can't wait for the stroke of midnight, so 2020 will be gone, and 2021 starts. I think that's what we said this, that time last year, amen? Amen. Can't wait for 2019 to be over with. 2020 is going to be a perfect vision year. Mm. I think we may be experiencing the same thing. Just because 2020 disappears and 2021 comes does not mean that peace is happening. 
doesn't mean that everything goes back to normal. We don't get to reset in 2021. We just continue on. But what God wants us to do is he wants us to look forward to 2021 because we made it through 2020 because of his peace that he gave gave us free of charge. All we have to do is surrender ourselves over to him. Give ourselves to him that he can in turn give us his peace not as the world gives it but as he gives it it's sure it's absolute and it's fulfilling so today I I don't know what you're dealing with here I don't know what you at home are dealing with but I do know that you can have peace through it right now no matter what it is because it's his peace So if you're here today or you're at home and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then today I want you to call upon his name. I want you to to call out and say, God, forgive me of my sin. I know that I need you. And and God, I, I desire that peace that the pastor's been talking about. I desire that peace that Bill read about. I desire that peace is right here. And I don't want to be fearful. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want my heart being troubled anymore. So God, I I I seek you to come into my life, forgive me of my sin, and I I claim Jesus as the sacrifice that only that he could be. And Lord, I receive him into my life today. Man, that's, that's what you do. But you believe in that. You know it to be true. And you receive him. But maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. But man, I'm telling you, things have been hard for me. And I, I want that renewal of peace. I don't want to be afraid anymore. I want to go back to that feeling of knowing that God is there and that God is for me and that God is is going to, to continue to work in me. I want that assurance. I want that blessed assurance we sing about. That my friend today, all you have to do is call on his name and say, God, forgive me for replacing you in my life with the stuff. And that stuff has brought me heartache. That stuff has brought me fearfulness. So God, today, I let go of all that. I turn myself back over to you. I pray, God, that you would restore to me the joy of your salvation. God, restore that to me today. That's what he offers us today. That's the peace It's divine peace because it's effective and it's lasting. I'm going to ask the praise team to come on back up and they're going to lead us in a song, man. And during this time, you here and you at home, what I want you to do is, man, I want you to be praying about this. I I want you to be calling out to Jesus' name and I want you to be singing along if you can. But if you can't, man, I, I, I I want you to turn yourself over to him and I want you to cry out to God today. Man, I want you to have peace in your heart this morning. Would you call on him today? And man, join back with me in praise and worship here as the praise team comes and leads us. But if you're here today and you need Jesus, man, call on his name. If you're at home, call on his name. He's ready. He's waiting. He just wants to hear from you. He is not, he is not, he is not your enemy. He wants, he wants you to know how much He loves you. Father, hear us today as we step back into this time. Lord, I pray that you speak to every heart that's here in this room and every heart that's watching this, this live stream. Father, I pray that you would just give them an overwhelming sense of peace as, as we yield ourselves back to you. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, would you stay with you at home? Would you join us again as we begin?